thanks again for doing this for us. Um, Nine, are you with me? Yes, I am. Thank you. So we're going to start off, if you don't mind, on the death towers. You are an OSP engineer working on these cancer towers, um, a.k.a. cell phone or Gwen towers, and uh, they have also have a term called cancer alley, right? Yes. Okay, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you what you do? Uh, well, I, I do a number of uh, duties for the uh, communications industry. I uh, I install, uh, replace, repair, and test the antenna systems on top of the towers, and and sometimes do a little bit of uh, adjustments down below in the electronic shacks. Okay, and are these are there any warnings on the outside of these towers that you work on? Yes, yes. If I'd uh, been a little more prepared, I have all kinds of pictures from the signs that show radiation, give the warnings, and say that it's not safe for uh, humans to enter. And primarily, that's just speaking of the area right there on the ground within the fence. But uh, the real danger is what's coming off the top of the towers. And that's what you work on? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and what what protective gear do they give you to protect you from this radiation that you're enduring? Uh, they don't furnish any gear for us at all. Uh, anything that I, the tools and the harness and the hard hats and all that, is uh, my own. Like, yeah, but that's uh, not that's not protective gear. That's just to make sure you don't fall off the thing. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's claimed to be the most dangerous job in the United States. Have you ever known anyone to die? Yeah, several several people. Uh, from falling off of them or from getting cancer? Falling. Falling. Most of them don't make it long enough, I don't think, for the cancer to uh, uh, incubate and uh, become uh, active. There's a lot of cancer episodes among some of the uh, guys that have been around the industry for a while. How do you lease a spot on a tower? Well, uh, you know, like your local police department, fire department, or your phone company, your cable TV company, anybody that needs to get a uh, microwave transmitter high up in the air to shoot a signal to the next receiver can go to somebody who owns a tower and say, I'd like to rent a spot on that tower from you. And they'll say, fine. They draw up the lease agreement. He goes up there and hangs his piece of equipment, runs a little piece of cable or whatever to the ground to hook it up, and, and it's uh, it's his show. The people with the towers, the people in the tower business generally are not in the communication business. They only uh, buy property, build towers, and then lease those towers out to whoever, U.S. Cellular, Verizon, Windstream, et cetera, et cetera. There's a, there's a lot of equipment on, on just about every one of these towers that is not for cell phones, too, if that's the Right. Point. Okay. I want you to tell everyone about the FCC altering documents of radiation results? Well, the FCC wasn't so much responsible as the contractors hired to do the work. And uh, rather than to set the equipment up properly, they have logs that need to be turned in, and these logs are generated from their uh, meters where the picture is stored of the wavelength and the meter downloads to a computer or desktop. And these logs have to be accurate for the location and time that it says on there. But uh, many of the guys uh, alter the documentation, send it in anyway. And why do they do this? Uh, inexperienced primarily. The guys did not know how to set the equipment up properly or they didn't know how to correct the uh, components in the electronics that were creating a malfunction. So, so why would they, they hire someone that didn't know what they were doing? Well, uh, you know, if you stumble across a job like this and you have an opportunity to step into a contract that's going to gross uh, $15 million a year or maybe be uh, 20 guys on the job site, then you want to get 20 of them on the job site, whether you right. have the experienced hands or not. And I tell you right now, there is such a deficit in experienced hands that there's no way that all the jobs can be filled with experienced people right now. They've got to put what they can in there now because... Uh, they're wanting the bottom line. They want the revenue. This, this are they? Is, are these nice. towers endangering our lives? Well, uh, definitely. And what's worse than some of the towers is when we mount these transmitters on the corner of your buildings. We've got them mounted on hospitals. We've got them mounted on apartment buildings. We've got them mounted on banks. 
we got them mounted all over, especially in these uh, more densely populated cities. And those towers, those uh, transmitters, they're on buildings. You can just about guarantee there are people working in other offices or apartments in direct line of that transmitter. And that's where they're creating what the industry calls cancer alleys. Right. You told me that some of the, the men that you had worked with could taste their fillings. Uh, reported to me. Uh, I've never had it myself, but uh, these uh, antennas are on top of the towers. They say to stay away from them. I think it's like stay away from two feet from the back of it while it's energized, and they don't want you in the front of it at all. But I tell you, we we uh, we don't shut them down to work on them, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done off the side and sometimes near the front of them. And I've had a couple guys tell me that they felt uh, they tasted foil in their mouth while they were in the front of it, you know. What kind of contract did they write you up to, to agree to this job? <laughs> Is there a disclaimer, point. like, that they're not responsible for anything that happens to you? Or? No, it's, uh, it's, it's passed on down to each individual contract signed. But okay. If it, ever went to, if it ever came into court, and this has been the same throughout my life in several different industries, I've been a contractor and subcontractor all my life. But in every industry, it comes down to the same thing: that if there is a, if there is an injury, then uh, the work-related injury or illness is passed back up through court, back up to the prime contractor, and right into the customer's lap. And then the jury decides how much what percentage of responsibility each one of the people involved in this incident are responsible for. And right. Over. You're admitting that these are leaking radiation, and the FCC or whoever is contracted by them is altering the, the um, documents and altering the results yeah. of the radiation that's coming from them. So they, if they, we they can't even that. trust them, why, can, why would we have them next to schools and churches and stuff? Well, I can only tell you, that they have large slurry ponds from coal mines resting on small hilltops directly above schoolhouses, and these slurry ponds are breaking their dams uh, probably yearly. So I don't know why they would put that slurry pond above a schoolhouse of elementary uh, aged children, and I don't know why they would want these towers anywhere near a school. Can you just basically give everyone a description or definition of what a death tower is? Well, uh, a lot of the towers out there have uh, antennas, uh, transmitters up there that uh, are doing a lot more than carrying your cell phone signals. Uh, and, and uh, you know, they, uh, they radiate harmful radiation uh, to uh, passive uh, citizens, let alone the towers that are designed to control crowds in a uh, non-lethal defense system. Right. You said it's a ground weapon defense system. Can you elaborate on that? It has been extensive since probably about 2005. But uh, primarily it was all up and down the East Coast, particularly around D.C., Richmond, uh, the hot spots in Virginia, where uh, it's more than mind control. It's a physical uh, body control. It's, some people call them heat and uh, uh, they, can, uh, they can render a body completely incapacitated through uh, these uh, uh, frequency transmissions. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll turn them on and people become completely disoriented, uh, vertigo, nauseous, lose all control of their body functions, and uh, uh, you collapse to the ground and you remain there until the signal's shut off. Right. So do you think they're setting these up, preparing for something, like in case they may need to use them on us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly why they're put there. I mean, right, they, that's really uh, scary. They, another type of uh, defense there that uh, at a lower uh, level transmission, uh, it, it will cause like a hissing or a vibration or a hum, and no matter where you are, this uh, sensation will seemingly be coming from directly behind your head, and uh, the disorientation, the fear, the uh, 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 it, it, uh, it, it will stop anybody from uh, any activity they might be up to, and, and it's uh, 
it will take the wind out of your sail if you're there to obstruct justice or put up a fight. And I do know some uh, people I work with who uh, suffer uh, extreme uh, uh, condition of vertigo and uh, uh, taste in their mouth, uh, ears ringing, stuff like that. I don't know if they were more susceptible to it or if they just uh, uh, have, have been uh, exposed. Uh, to a higher degree, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, for the most part, you just you work through it. You get there, you get your job done, and get out of there as soon as you can. Right now, the FCC regulates these towers. Um, what's to keep them from falsifying documentation, or or to keep other people from falsifying the documentation of the radiation levels that they give to the FCC? Is there a checks and balances system in this? Yeah, there, there's uh, there's supposed there, according you know if you look at it on paper it would look like there's a check and balance system, but uh, in, unless they're there at the same time someone is falsifying documentation, it's awful hard to prove that uh, this technician didn't actually uh, leave the site with everything performing properly and then something changed after he left. So right. it, it's almost impossible to uh, to prove. Uh, any falsification of documentation. Have you ever known anyone to falsify documents to hand to the FCC? Uh, uh, on several accounts, not particularly on the uh, towers, but on uh, uh, some uh, telephony broadband systems uh, in uh, uh, situation of radiation leakage and stuff like that, yeah. Uh, these tower locations generally do not have their actual physical address the physical address is going to be a mile or two uh, away from where the tower site uh, actually is, and I don't understand the uh, discrepancies there, whether it's just to protect the tower sites or whatever. I'm not sure, but but right. uh, you you just have to go to the FCC, find out what uh, uh, proof of performance testing has been turned in, and uh, what the leakage was, and and uh, and I'm sure it's all going to be uh, up to par there. But the only way to do it is for uh, the public to put together some of their own little crews with some test equipment and start going into some of these sites measuring the leakage themselves. Right, and you said we can get something like that at Radio Shack or, like, on the Internet, right? Yeah, yeah. You uh, you know, and they're not going to give you a radio. Uh, some of these frequency counters will only tell you what, free, what uh, wavelengths are being transmitted uh, we're at on this on the on the uh, spectrum, but uh, to uh, measure your radiation leakage, there's CLI testers they call them, and those will give you the amount of radiation that's being leaked. And and uh, cable TV, phone company, uh, any of these type of supply uh, companies will have those meters available. Do you feel like these towers are safe for the American people? And I, this is an opinionated question. Uh, for several different reasons, uh, they are, uh, definitely are not safe. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're yeah. physical hazards. They're they're falling down. They're uh, structurally not designed to be carrying the amount of weight that we're eventually putting up there. A lot of these things are older towers, and they weren't designed to have all this weight on them. Uh, just the fact of age and corrosion is bringing some of them down. There's probably, I don't know, I'm guessing right now, but there's probably at least one every day catching on fire. And uh, uh, no, they're, they're, they're not safe. And that's not even to mention the radiation that's being transmitted from these towers. And, and many of the times these transmitters up there, they call them antennas, but they're transmitters. They have to be uh, pointed uh, in specific directions at specific angles and uh, many times you'll go up there and see that they're pointed down toward the ground. They're pointed in areas that they're, that they're not even supposed to be uh, uh, generating their, their signals. Right, so they can be oh. pointed down at, like, the basketball court where the children are playing for some reason? I mean, is that they possible? Could be. They, okay. they, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the, when we see that uh, transmitter, that when we see that antenna, it looks like uh, maybe an 8-foot tall by maybe uh, 14 to 16 inches wide. And it's smooth covered, but that, that's just the that's just the cover. The transmitters are inside that, and uh, it, it's hard to tell if they're, if they're uh, 
uh, mounted correctly in there, or if they're pointed down, or, or whatever. You know, I mean, this is right. uh, this is, is something that's really too dangerous just to assume that everything's been put put together correctly. Right, and you said that uh, anyone can lease a spot on the tower. There'll, there'll be uh, generally a cell phone, the cell phone uh, up there will be uh, three antennas on three sides of the tower, and they're about eight foot tall, a foot and a half wide, and those the ones that are smaller than that, the, the ones that are round, uh, these are not cell phone uh, transmitters, and and uh, uh, generally, I mean, they're all they're all uh, not healthy. They're all destructive to uh, uh, any anything that's living. Maybe they just don't want us to be able to go down to the FCC or uh, to the local courthouse and, and draw up the uh, exact coordinates of these towers either. I don't know, but, but very seldom do, does the address match the physical location of the tower site. Right. Nine, you had uh, some people threaten you, didn't you, after you reported them about um, falsifying the documents, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, n- nearly... Uh, uh, destroyed my career, and I mean, it put me on the run for several years. I mean, I, I had uh, I, I had a group of four people that were uh, chasing me from uh, one ocean to the other, and kept showing up on job sites, uh, uh, pretending to be federal marshals, and uh, it, it was crazy. It was crazy, and it was all because of some of these texts that were uh, falsifying documentation on a particular job, and, and they were they were they were busted. Right. And, uh, well, at least you were doing the right thing. I want to ask you if you feel any effects from the towers after years of working on them. Uh, who, who knows what could be incubating? I mean, I I, uh, I feel fine, and, right. uh, but but I know I know some of the other people I've worked with aren't aren't doing so well. Wait, right. how many people have died from the ta- for like accidents on the towers? Well, just since January, I think there's probably been maybe uh, twelve to fourteen. Mm. They're all from falling. Days. They're from falling yeah. off of them. That's so horrible. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and there's not that many of us out there. So I mean, 12 to 14 in seven or eight months may not seem like a lot, but uh, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's, it, it, it is. It's quite a few, and most of these guys are young. Most of them have families and, and young children. And uh, yeah, it's really sad. I exposed those guys who were falsifying the documentation to the FCC, and uh, uh, so a lot of his people were uh, terminated. Uh, one of them ended up doing federal time. He had uh, been arrested before under the same pretenses of falsifying his documentation to the FCC. It wasn't a long time, but they, they uh, sentenced him to a few years in federal prison. And so yeah. the owners of the uh, the owners of the company... Uh, uh, turn the table on me, and I thought they would be. I thought they would be happy for me because we don't want these guys out here working in the field that aren't doing things proper. So when I exposed them, I thought this would be a chance for me to uh, uh, move up the ladder and uh, uh, acquire a little more responsibility and, and uh, income. But and it's the opposite. Yeah. 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 Exposing uh, the bad guys usually doesn't help you move up in a in a job, especially if you're working for them. Yeah, I understand that. I was naive enough to think that we all had the same interest. But for a lot of people out there, it's the financial gain, and that's all they're worried about. Yeah. Not your children. It's not my children. It's probably not even their own children. Pardon me, Madison. I would like to tell everybody that if you live anywhere around the bottom of these towers, especially those ones they call a monopole that is just a round tower, and it looks like a telescope sitting on the ground upside down, uh, they're, uh, they're experiencing a lot of structural uh, integrity problems with these because we're overloading them. These towers were built for a lot less weight than what we're putting up there right now. But we continue to put more and more transmitters up there, and these towers are falling over. They're catching on fire. There's all kinds of things going down with these towers because they're not designed to hold the weight that we're putting up there. So if you've got any of these in your backyard, uh, look at them close. They may have these big straps of steel bolted to the sides of this thing going all up and down there, and it looks like a real uh, thatch job. Well, that's what's wrong. That tower was weak, and they've gone in there, and they tried to band-aid it up. 